not this time. It's still December for me, and that's what counts. It's the last Thursday of December, and it's New Year's Eve for some people still when this comes out. So welcome to the December 2020 Q&A Holiday Edition DX or something like that. <laughs> Christmas might be over, but it doesn't mean I can't answer Christmassy questions. <laughs> like, like this one! Cole asks, what's the best Christmas present you ever received? And honestly, this is a really hard one to answer because I feel like I've gotten a lot of good things over the years in Christmas. So instead, I'm gonna say that a lot of the times in the past, my mom had this whole thing where she liked to get a lot of like really fluffy blankets for Christmas. So we'd always have like new blankets. And now we just have, like, a, a lot of them. So whenever anybody comes over, we always have a blanket for them, which is actually, like, really nice. Nolan says, uh, Christmas tree reveal? I can share this video that I put on Twitter with you right now. Parker asks, what would be your idea for a Christmas Splatfest that doesn't exist? I'm gonna make it very simple for you. On one side, you got candy canes. On the other side, you have the candy canes that don't actually taste like candy canes. And I wanna know, do people prefer the mint ones or all the other ones? I think that'd make a decent Splatfest. I'd pick the mint. Aki asks, what present made you cringe inside? So, instead of actually getting a cringeworthy present this year, there was this large build-up <laughs> that my dad did on Christmas, where my sister and I both had these very large, very flat gifts under the tree, but he made it very clear that they had to be opened up, like, last. And we were like, okay, okay. So we open up everything, which is mostly clothes, because clothes are fine, and I, I honestly like getting clothes for Christmas, I'm one of those people. And we open up the flat gifts, and they're just... They're just laundry hampers. He's like, yeah, see? Now you can carry all your clothes upstairs easily. <laughs> and I was like, nice. Vika Joe with the important questions, asking, does Sheldon pay me extra on Squid Miss Week? And no, no he doesn't, but he lets me use any of the weapons for free that week for fun. DHVF asks, do I have a particular food that I eat every holiday season? I would say for us, we always have salmon, but we never have it on Christmas. We have salmon on Christmas Eve, and then we always have pasta on Christmas Day. And that has happened, I think, without fail, since I was, like, small. <laughs> Amazing Wave asks, hey, are you ever gonna, ever gonna do anything on Twitch? I was gonna do Twitch Sings, but Twitch Sings dies after today. <laughs> so, not right now, maybe in the future. Twitch is cool, I like a lot of things on Twitch. But for now, I think I'm good with YouTube. Great Gamer asks, are you good at singing in the Inkling language? And I will say no, because it's like kind of like this vocalized version of Japanese as far as I've seen. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not very good at speaking Japanese at all. If I really wanted to imitate like a song that I hear from Pearl and Marina, I'll just... <laughs> I'll just use like sounds instead. Like I might do like a But that's not that's not singing as much as it is like just making notes. Blue asks, do you have any goals for the new year? Honestly, I wanna make my own music. I don't know if I'll actually do it, but boy howdy am I gonna try. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep doing what I like to do, which is YouTube and work and having a good time. Yordi says, reverse question, ooh, ask the community a question. Okay, okay, so recently on Twitter, I asked people what their craziest, like, dreams were that they could remember, and I kinda wanna do that here too. So let me know in the comments what your, like, favorite dream was, or like a recent dream, some kind of, like, interesting dream that you wanna share with the class, so people can read them. I'll read as many of them as I can too, because I really like looking at them, they're fun. Eat says, <laughs> wait, Vic has a dog? I do! Right, right here! Hopefully I found an old video too and it'll go right here. Where's he? Hey, baby. Hey. <laughs> Random Vid says, if you had to remove one character from the whole Splatoon series and never coming back, what would it be? Uh, it would probably be Jelfonzo. <laughs> I feel bad saying that, but he's got so little characterization.
attention. He's just the shop guy. Salad asks, have you ever thought of doing story times? And if so, will you? And honestly, the answer is yes. One time I actually spent like an hour recording session doing stuff with my friends and we were talking about like the validity of teleportation. <laughs> And like how it would work and all the different ways it could work. I never posted that even though I'm really tempted to someday if I can like find a way to make it a little silly with maybe like animating it or something with like PNGs and stock images. But I, I, I mean I like telling stories. That's what like a lot of my streams become. It'd be fun to do story time videos but I wouldn't want something like that to overtake the channel for what it is being like gaming and stuff. So maybe or maybe I'll just keep it to the Q&A's and the stream bows. Poyo says, you were expecting a- oh. <laughs> yeah, it says, you were expecting a question, but it was me, Dio. <laughs> oh my god, I've been Dio'd on my own Q&A, no. <laughs> Nate says, please elaborate on that forensic science club you spoke of back in a previous Q&A. I'd love to hear more about it. Okay, so when I was in 9th or 10th grade, I started going to a forensic science club that some of my friends actually liked going to. And I remember it was nice because it was a way for me to be able to hang out with some of my IRL friends that weren't actually in a lot of my classes because we were separated by like being in like honors and things like that. And we were in it for two years. I remember it was only two years because the funding got cut so more money could go to like sports or the cheerleaders or something like that. That was always our conspiracy theory. But during my first year in the club, we actually ended up going to a like a forensic science competition of sorts. And the competition was actually located at the university that I ended up going to for college. So my first experience with going to my university was actually at this club. And I still have memories to these days of like carrying dirt samples. <laughs> Like, up and down the stairs of the main building at my university. And I remember that, like, when I first started going to school there, I could only associate the forensics club with my university. It was hard to, like, be like, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a student here. I'm not here to accomplish some kind of task for some kind of club activity. I'm here to learn and grow and be in college. And obviously that subsided in time, but... Uh, the club meant a lot to me. I still have a couple of little trinkets from it, but honestly not too much. All I have mostly is the memories, and that makes me happy. Forensic science as a whole is a really cool subject, and when I was young, I used to watch way too much Investigation Discovery. <laughs> and I think that it overlapped a little bit with me actually being in Forensics Club, but not like too much. But it was a good time, and I'm really happy that I joined that club, because it was totally different from pretty much everything else I did. Yeah. Icicle asks, what's your favorite Splatoon 1 special? My favorite Splatoon 1 best. Wow, why is it so hard to say Splatoon 1 special? Splatoon 1 special, Splatoon 1 special, yes. My favorite Splatoon 1 special was Echolocator. It just was an easy tank refill, and you knew where everybody was. So, like, if you're playing competitively, you were, like, super useful, because you could just, like, tell everybody where all your opponents were, and they all saw it anyway, so that also helped. But it, it was just nice to be able to, like, outplay people with bombs after you threw the Echo, because I usually was playing Dually Squelter, or Dual Squelter at the time. So I would just be like, Echo Locator, into bomb, into win! Flowey asks, do you live by yourself? No! I live with my family. I'm hoping to move out in, like, another year or two, but right now I'm comfortable living at home, and my family is willing to support that. Mario asks a very, a very real question, saying, have you ever had a moment in a dream where, like, you're in the dream, and then you're like, nope, nope, and then you wake yourself up, but then you reinsert yourself into it right after? Yeah, I usually have, like, kind of instead of a nope feeling, where I'll wake up from a dream and be like, wow, this is such a cool dream, I want to go back to it, and I'll, like, go back to bed to continue the dream? But when I do that, it makes me forget everything that happened up to that point, and sometimes like even after that point, and then I'll wake up like an hour or two later and be like, wow, that was such a great dream. I remember none of it. Because <laughs> if I don't take the time to like write down the dream after like the first part of it, it all just is gone. It's no good. It's all, it's all gone though. <laughs> I gotta get better about that, because I want to like start another dream journal, I think. Armando says, do you have any stories about having braces? And honestly, 
I think that like one of the best things that comes out of having braces is you realize how bad they're not like <laughs> actually. I mean, of course it's odd that like I can't really eat certain things without worrying about, you know, breaking them. But I've had braces since like January and I haven't broken them yet. So, you know, knock on wood, but I I'm thinking that I'm doing a pretty good job about the whole thing. <laughs> Lego asks, hey Vic, what's your favorite indie game? And this is a hard one because before this year, I was so like focused on Splatoon that I really barely played any other games, like let alone indie games. But this year, like branching onto some has been really fun. And I would say like, if I had to pick between two, it probably would end up being like Celeste or Hollow Knight. Even though those are very popular indie games, they just, they're popular for a reason, they're good games. I think I would like edge in Celeste by like the smallest amount because Celeste is probably the one that almost made me cry a lot. Like if I wasn't on stream, I would have definitely cried at like a couple of scenes in Celeste and, and you probably know like which ones they are, but dude, Celeste is such a good game. Wee Boy asks a question that really made me think for a moment and said, would you rather have Splatoon on the Wii or the 3DS? And I feel like while the Wii has really odd motion controls sometimes, see Mario Galaxy 2, I feel like I'd rather have it on the Wii because I just, I, I can't imagine using motion controls on the 3DS to like move around with Splatoon. I feel like that'd be the same as playing like handheld motion. I don't know, I, I, I feel like you would have a lot of people that would be playing Splatoon really like wildly and just accidentally like throw their 3DS across the room while like trying to like dodge from a bomb or something like that. <laughs> It's just a... I don't want to lose my 3DS, man. They're expensive. Michael says, What are some old shows that you found out long after they aired and fell in love with? I think usually this ends up being anime. I think a lot of animes, it's very easy to find them after the fact and then really love them. Like, I definitely watched Inuyasha after its peak. I watched Squid Girl Gears after it actually aired. Uh, it's just an anime, yeah. I don't watch a lot of regular TV, so this question isn't as easy to answer as I thought it was gonna be when I started reading it a couple of seconds ago, oops. <laughs> the thing about watching anime like never when it's actually airing is you miss the peak of a lot of fan bases. And this can be like a double-edged sword because like, oh, you, you miss like the fans that are like super ecstatic about the show. But when you also try to talk to your friends about like a show being like, oh, this is the thing that I'm watching right now. Like a lot of my friends keep up with anime properly and they're like, oh, Vic, I watched that like a year ago or three years ago. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so sometimes while I'm watching a show, I'll like live vicariously through the people that watched it by like reading old forum posts about people's enjoyment of shows from like the time they came out like 2015 or like 2013 or 2017 and I'm like yeah I'm enjoying this show live with these people totally Squaggy says, what do you think your content will be like in 2022? I'll be part of the YouTube conglomerate by then, making only videos with funny reaction faces in them. Yes. <laughs> I think that honestly, as time goes on though, I'll probably get more and more comfortable with making like comedic content and doing more variety content as opposed to just doing like a lot of Splatoon content. I, I love making Splatoon content, but I really want to do like other stuff for other games too. Like when I make Pokemon videos or when I eventually put out Among Us stuff or it, whatever else comes my way. I really want to also make like little skits. I want to make skits really bad. I have a green screen. I've made like those two little funny green screen videos and I kind of expected by now to make like a comedy video using the green screen and I promise it's, go it's gonna happen eventually it's gonna be great when it happens you'll see Pichiru says what's your favorite thing to do in your pastime when I was a little bit younger my friends and I used to watch like the worst movies that we could find or YouTube videos about people watching the worst movies that they could find and that was probably like one of my favorite things to do like back like another year or two ago Isaac says are you ever gonna customize your pro controller and honestly it, probably not, because I don't want to break it. <laughs> I actually got a sponsored email one time a while back where someone was trying to offer me, like, custom pieces for my Switch itself, and I was really tempted to say yes and to get them for free with the intention of making a YouTube video along the lines of, like, I am breaking my Switch for money. <laughs> But I really didn't want to risk breaking my Switch or my Joy-Cons for like a custom shell, so it never happened. But maybe someday I'll end up caving and buying the little shell, because they were going to give me like stuff to make my Switch purple. And like it looks really nice and like good quality, but I'm just 
don't think I'd be very good with a screwdriver and actually taking apart my Joy-Cons without, like, breaking something. Kev says, question, if you could travel back in time, what year and decade uh, would you travel to? I think I would go to, like, 2012 or so. Whatever is the year that I'm, like, the most active in theater in high school, I think that's where I'd like to go. Not to, like, reinsert myself and relive it, but just to, like, watch it from an outsider's perspective and see myself enjoying theater again. Because one of my favorite things to do in high school was actually, like, the times where I would do theater, and it was always this, like, mad rush in, like, the second semester of the school year, where it'd be, like, this three to five month period, probably more like three or four, where we would have to learn a show, learn all the lines, like, get everything together, and then, you know, put the show out there. And the time that I spent with those people in my theater club was probably some of the most important part of my time in high school for, like, socializing. So I would love to relive that and just see myself learn and grow. I feel like that'd be really wholesome and nice. <laughs> Squidman says, share your art. <laughs> okay, okay, how about here's a sketch that I did for a thumbnail, and here's the result. Here's a sketch I did for a thumbnail that hasn't come out yet, and here's the result. <laughs> Eventually I'll get the content related to that one, I swear. Litton asks, if you could turn invisible for one hour, what would you do? I really like this one. I thought about it a lot. And I feel like what I would do is I would pull out my green screen and start just recording things like floating just so I would have them as like images for videos and streams and like funny gags. <laughs> yes. Ando says, does anybody open the door for a native New Yorker? Yeah. I feel like I'm biased because of college, but in college, like, a lot of people open the door for each other. And I feel like in New York, people probably open the door for each other not on purpose, but probably more because since everyone is usually in, like, a hurry in the city, for example, if there are enough people, you know, like, going, like, one by one by one by one through a door, the poor door has no chance to ever close, which I, I guess keeps it open, technically speaking, right? <laughs> The penguin says, Vic, what are each of your pet's favorite human food? <laughs> My cat likes cream cheese. I would say Tippy's favorite food is without a doubt ice cream. Ziggy is very specific in that he likes to steal the bacon off of, like, bagels that I get from the deli. And Pebbles has no particular preference as long as it's something that she can steal when I am not looking. <laughs> Captain says, are snakes cute? Yes, they are. I have some friends who used to own a snake, and it was it was really cute. We used to get snaps and stuff all the time with a snake, but snakes are good. Soup asks, I'm sorry if this has been asked before, but what weapon was your first one that you played a lot of in Splatoon? You say yours was the Octobrush Nouveau. I'll say mine was the regular Octobrush. I've told this before, but the first time I ever got to S+, Plus was actually with the regular Octobrush in Splatoon 1. I used to watch a friend who played it a lot, and I was like, I, I want to do that. I want that, I want that to be me! So I just kind of imitated her playstyle, and it worked! And finally, Finlock asks, Why is it no longer Christmas, Vic? What, what, what did you do? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't keep the time stopped for very long. I, I tried, but it only ended up being for 24 hours. Uh, but, but you know what you can do forever? You can keep asking me questions for next month's Q&A. We're still doing these in 2021. Hey! So, please, go ahead. Leave a question in the comments below, and I'll try to answer it in the next Q&A. Will I get to all of them? No. Will I get to some of them? Yes. So thank you for giving me your time. Thank you for giving me so much of your time, actually, honestly. Like, the channel almost doubled in subscribers since the start of the year, which was not something that I expected out of the year, especially after having, like, a, a slower, more relaxed, really fun 2019. This ended up being a much faster-paced, very variety-filled 2020, where I got to make a lot of friends, but I just really wanted to talk to more people, and that's what happened this year. I hope you've been enjoying the changes to the content, and I hope that you have a safe and happy 2021. That's important. Please make sure to look out for yourself. Make sure to look out for your friends, too. And, uh, remember, remember to drink some water! Yeah! Thank you for everything. I never would have expected things to go the way they are, and I'll keep doing what I can to make you happy. Vic out.